Let's go, Mounties. Looking good. Good job. Good job. Hi, I'm Sarah. Um, I first started running for one of my local teams last week um, when I was 12. Um, I got into running through my primary school and my PE teacher there uh, just recommended that I'd go along to the running club. Um, so yeah, I started at last week when I was 12. I'm still... Uh, a proud member of Last Wade. Uh, I've been coached by Kirk and Linda my whole, well, that's 10 years now. So this is a big change for me coming out to America, leaving Kirk and Linda. That was hard for me. Um, yeah, that's me. <laughs> so I got into Steeplechase actually through the YDLs. I was part of Team Edinburgh and you know what they're like, uh, when you're just trying to get as many people to fill the events. And I was like, yeah, I'll do steeplechase. So I put myself forward and I mean, I wasn't great at it, but I wasn't bad. Um, it's It was really fun. It was a good event and I really enjoyed it. And yeah, I've just stuck with steeplechase. I still like to do the flat races as well, but yeah, steeplechase is a lot of fun and I really enjoy it. Yeah, the summer was good. I definitely didn't make the breakthrough that I knew I was kind of capable of. Um, for the last few years, that sub 10 was kind of there, but just never really happened. Um, and then, yeah, actually in the final of the European under 23s, I was able to go sub 10 and get a nice little PB. So that was good. Um and yeah, winning box was a nice addition as well. And then it was also just quite nice to have a, a good sort of send off towards kind of springboarding me towards the NCAA. So yeah, it was a really nice um, season for me and my coaches. Yeah, so I, I mean, I was approached when I was still at high school. Um, you know, you get all those dms on instagram and all this being like oh we really want you to come to our school and i, I my club got emails and stuff um so yeah it was nice to be wanted i guess but it was never something that i considered definitely not straight out of high school um and i don't regret that actually i had a great time at sterling um and then it wasn't until maybe fourth year to be honest with you that I was like okay what am I going to do here um and making the step into the NCAA seemed like the logical um option so I kind of started reaching out to some coaches in the US um I spoke a lot to some girls that are already here in the NCAA and kind of like asked them for some advice on how to get started and start the process. I was a little bit late starting the process. I do recommend that you do it a little bit earlier than what I did, but um, yeah, just start reaching out um, to coaches and then was having calls with them, having calls with the team. They do fly you out for visits. I never actually took any schools up on that offer just because I was writing my dissertation and competing at home it just never really worked um but yeah I I just was speaking to coaches online and um having having calls with them so that's kind of how it all came about really from the initial conversation um I had quite a lot of calls with the coach with the team um they would like zoom call me or or facetime me when they were at the track and they would show me the facilities and stuff and then kind of you have to fill out all your eligibility forms um and that's a bit of a swear word to me right now yeah. because they're <laughs> driving me crazy um but yeah you have to fill out all your eligibility forms and that's a big a big um 
undertaking it takes quite a while and you have to make sure that it's all done properly but your coach or the school that you've um decided you're wanting to go to or even if you've still got a few decisions the coaches will help you with these applications so you have to do that and then you have to apply to the school um I would say it's quite it's relatively straightforward because the coaches here know exactly what you need to do um so they they really guide you through through the process um and then you obviously you have to go get your visa um and stuff so that was that was quite fun I went with uh, Tom Graham Marr who's at Boise oh, okay. so mm -hmm. we had a wee trip to London um and got all of our documents sorted um there's a lot of documentation that you need to sort and the school will really they'll really help you so I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about that yeah so I mean I'm not too great at making decisions so it was quite a a hard process for me um but actually at the end of the day it just came down to the relationship that kind of I'd built with the coach here um and the girls that are on the team here as well um I kind of stepped away from the statistics of, you know, like, oh, we've come this at NCAA, we've got this, 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 this. Um, and coaches really like to tell you how great their program is. But actually, Sean was kind of the only coach that spoke to me as a, as a person. And he was like, I want you to run for your country and I want you to do all of these things. And of course, I want you to help the school, but I'm not going to, you know, sell your limbs so that we win the NCAAs. Like it's, he's, he's a really understanding coach. And I think that there's a lot of kind of negativity around or, or skepticism around the, um, NCAA and that they'll just run you to the ground and and you'll you'll be made to race when you're injured etc so like I was really cautious of that um, and Sean is literally the complete opposite to that I mean when I first started speaking to them the girls all laugh because I I was like I don't even know where West Virginia is I've never <laughs> even heard of the school I have no idea and that's just because Sean really focuses on the individuals on the program and he wants them to do well. There's Olympians that I train with who aren't part of the school anymore. They've graduated and they stay here to train. Um, there's a couple of the girls that were at the World Championships in Budapest this year um, and they I train with them. Um, so that was really um what what grabbed me um and pulled me towards West Virginia um and just that like personal relationship that I'd um kind of established with Sean the coach and I really felt like he was going to treat me right yeah I mean I won't lie to you it's not been the easiest of processes um I really love my home and I love my friends and my family at home so it has been hard at times um and I don't think I had quite prepared myself for how hard it was going to be um but everybody here Sean the girls on the team like nobody ever wants me to feel like I I can't just go home um and they all really, really help to make me feel like this is a little bit of home, um, which is really nice and it's really helpful. Um, but yeah, the transition was, it was hard. I won't lie, it was it was really hard. Um, but I would I would really I would say it was worth it and I'm I'm having a great time now. Um, the first few weeks were just really difficult. You're just getting used to a completely different setup. America is 
very different to Scotland. Um, yep, the food was took a wee bit of getting used to. Um, I mean, I came to an unfurnished apartment, so I had literally nothing. I had to get all of my furniture and everything. I didn't even have a bed to sleep on <laughs> the first night I got here. So okay. that was interesting as well. But it's all, no, it's all part of the process. And I can look back now and I laugh about it. And the girls all tease me because I came to the long run, like so jet lagged. And I was like, oh, I just want to go home. But it's it's funny now. <laughs> and um, yeah, that was, that was a big... Uh, wake up call for me when I first got here but I've I've really settled in and school here is really enjoyable um so that's a big positive and the training here is really similar to what I was used to at home and Sean made sure of that, that I wasn't changing much um obviously you're moving country so there's there's a lot of change. So keeping your training the same was really important for me. Um, and then, yeah, I got pretty much straight into cross country season and I definitely prefer cross country here. If, if that's what we can call it. <laughs> um, my very first race was a 6k. It was like, well, they call it cross country, but it was like, manicured grass there was not a hill in sight and we went out and we ran so fast I was like oh this is this is quite enjoyable actually this is quite fun it's, <laughs> so it's, it's not Cumbernauld no um and I do have a little bit of FOMO though I can't lie I've been seeing everybody racing at home and I'm like oh I wish I was doing short course this weekend oh. but <laughs> yeah I mean I don't know if I'd be saying that if I was at home but um yeah the, the cross country is different here and I've really been enjoying it and I've actually really been enjoying that kind of team aspect as well that's not really something that I've ever been too used to at home um we all put ourselves on the line and we all want to race well for the team and that's really important and it's it's actually really nice to be part of and everybody wants each other to do well. And that's not really something that I've been part of, not at Sterling or at La Suede. Of course, we all want each other to do well, but there's not so much of a team focus um, at home like what there is out here. I mean, it is crazy. There is coaches screaming at the girls around you to get them to go faster. That's it, Catherine, looking really good there. That's it, Sarah, great job. There you go, Lex. And I mean, Sean doesn't do that. He thinks it's hilarious, but um, some of the coaches really, really uh, are shouting at the girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think Sean would got on well in Scotland, but it sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, um... he's, actually, he's actually got Irish, Irish, Irish parents, I think. Oh, right, okay. So, he does claim that he great 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 grandparents that they all say <laughs> oh that they all say yeah. yeah it's it's not quite it's a wee bit more legit than that but <laughs> I wasn't really sure what to expect when I came over here because I'd never come on a visit um but it is really true what they say everything is bigger in America yeah. that's for sure <laughs> um there's just like the facilities the gym the all the equipment that they have is crazy we have our own like locker rooms um with like our names on all of the lockers and everything that's pretty cool um there's hot tub cold tub underwater treadmill alter g's boost treadmills you can get any treatment that you can think of they they'll give you it um yeah it's just like the recovery here is second to none like you can you can get anything you want they have a fuel station where you can just go athletes just go and just take whatever food they want you can just take it um and then we get meals cooked for us 
um, a couple of days a week. So that's that's quite nice as well. I mean, I'm trying to go to as many sports games as I can. I've been to football or American football, yeah. <laughs> been to soccer as well. Um, I've not been to basketball, but I really want to go to the basketball. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to get around as many as many sports as I can. I cannot get over the American football here. It's like the stadium, I stay right next to the stadium and it's the same size as Murrayfield. Really? It's mental. Yeah. And it's packed. They yeah. fill the whole thing out. And this is for college football. Yeah. It's crazy. It's so fun. Um, I really recommend going to a college football game if you can. Um, but yeah, just the facilities here is it's really what dreams are made of, if I'm honest with you. It's really great. Yeah, so um, I actually just spoke with Sean yesterday and I put the Boston word in. So hopefully we'll be going there a few times for indoors, which I am so excited about. <laughs> um, yeah, got some plans for indoors. I think they're still they're still in pencil at the moment, mm. so we'll just see. But yeah, got some indoor plans, and then it'll be straight on to outdoors. I think something that's very different about the NCAA is that they have three championship seasons, and it goes pretty much straight from cross country to indoor to outdoor, and you're not expected to do, or Sean doesn't expect me to do all of them. Um, but if you want to, you can do all mm. three. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing some Boston races. Um, yeah. And then it'll be on to outdoors, which I'm really looking forward to. Is it steeplechase again, outdoors, or maybe a bit of everything? Yeah, a bit of everything. I'm hoping to kind of give some flat races a go on the indoor season. And then, yeah, it'll mainly be steeplechase um, outdoor, but I'm really keen to get some other flat races done as well, which I think really helps with the steeplechase anyway. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, I think I'll be coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll be coming back, but it'll only be for maybe four weeks right. or so because the... Um, outdoor track finishes in like the end of June and then you kind of need to be back out here in August just for the start of cross country so it doesn't give you much time but I definitely will be going home <laughs> if anybody listening wants to reach out to me and ask me some more questions about the NCAA and the recruitment process then please just feel free to to give me a message and I'll try and help as best as I can